There was a news article in a local Memphis newspaper recently that that discussed the give and take of development and time and how with new things you lose things. And that's a good note to start today's story on because as I tried to tell this story, I couldn't find a real good place to stand and tell the story. So today I ended up where it started, on the river, with a reminder that Memphis is a river town. I started today to tell today's story at a cemetery in the middle of Memphis, but the cemetery at that time was overgrown and neglected and not accessible. I was going to show you the burial site of Tom Lee, and then, but I could not do it. So I then went to a related house, one of the two houses I'll talk about in this story today. This was the Dixon home, family home in East Memphis. The other, the Tom Lee home. Both are connected, but a lot of the time we don't think about that. And in fact, when I visited the Dixon Gallery, I saw a founder's wall and a donor's wall. And that's important, but also none of that would have been able to exist were it not for the events in this story today. So going back to 1925, Tom Lee boarded his small motorboat he nicknamed the Zeb. The Emmy Norman also left port. Both were headed south. The Engineer Society were, were looking at the nearby levee work that was being completed. Tom Lee was actually dropping his boss off at a, at a related construction site. The morning went on without any fanfare, without any issues. And they both prepared to return to the ports here, in, or the docks here in Memphis. Tom Lee would have arrived in Memphis first, but his engine that morning was, was spittering and sputtering, and he knew that he could not go out to the dangerous current of the river with his boat not working correctly. So he let the river currents push him back to his dock, where he worked on it for some time. And he began as he managed to repair it. He was a jack of all trades and knew many things like this that he could make work. He began his journey back to Memphis. Around that time, the Emmy Norman and its sister ship, the Choctaw, were headed back to Memphis. The Choctaw made it back to Memphis sometime before the Emmy Norman, as Emmy Norman began to take on water. At first, it was a slight lifting. In fact, when Tom Lee passed the Emmy Norman, at first he may not have realized what was going on, but before he got out of sight, he looked back and began to realize that something was wrong. In a few short moments, the Emmy Norman would take on more water, and as if something pulled it down from the bottom of the river, would immediately flip over, trapping many of the p passengers inside the screened porches of the boat. Tom Lee was the only one near this location. No one was in earsight. No one was in eyesight. He, he also, and this is important, could not swim. He, at 39, he had never learned to swim. He turned his boat towards the site of the wreckage where passengers were already in the water. Some 72 passengers were on board that day. A handful were able to fight the current and get on shore. The first person that made it on shore managed to crawl through an Arkansas farm field and was lucky enough to find one of the few farm homes that had a telephone. They were able to telephone Memphis and back at Memphis, the alarm spread citywide and hundreds if not thousands of people crowded the shoreline trying to find boats to head south. Alarms were issued downriver as well. Look closely at these houses and you'll see two houses of Memphis and maybe something else. Two stories of two families that, that have been around the river for a very long time, lived and worked and, and lived their lives and passed on, yet their stories remain. Or do they?
Lee's house today stands abandoned, his memory only remaining truly in stories on Memphis Magazine, other websites, in the archives, and his namesake park we'll see. But a story of heroism, of a city that knew if he had not have acted would have lost something for the generations. There's so many good parts of this story that I didn't tell you today. For instance, the child that cried that the ship was going to sink and he did not want to get on the boat that day. He was the last remaining survivor of all of those who, who survived the ship that day. This video, I touched on something that has been a problem f forever in Memphis history. And it's the two houses of Memphis. Are we telling both stories? Sometimes it feels when you watch the daily, the daily news, you know, as a Memphian, we forget that Memphis is a river town. We sometimes prefer to forget our history and forget about the bad things. And the, and the good things sometimes slip through, too. But the storms of time, they come and they go, and we need to tell these stories. For it seems Memphis is now, as it was then, in need of a hero. You can read more about this, this story, on the fourth floor of the Memphis Public Libraries in the Memphis Room. Just ask to see the Tom Lee files. You can also learn more online by searching Memphis Magazine. Thank you for watching and, and look forward to more Roaming with Jerry.